Right, so people are always on at me to uh, do some more unboxing videos. So um, I'm going to do one of the new Unihertz Atom. Now, before we get to the Atom, I'll just show you the previous model, which is the Unihertz Jelly Pro, which is this one here, this little white phone. Now, I say little because uh, oh, it's on charge at the minute and probably won't come on. But if we compare it to a regular size, that's a Samsung Galaxy handset, you could see the massive size difference in this. Um, this little Unihertz Jelly Pro, which I'm trying to charge to show you it in action, has a tiny little screen. It's quad core 1.1 gigahertz screen, and it's got a little 950 milliamp hour battery. It's a 2.45 inch, 240 by 432 pixel screen. And on the camera is an eight mega, on the back rather, on the back there's an eight megapixel camera. And on the front, a two megapixel camera. I've done a full review of this. It's got a 3.5 uh, millimeter audio port. It's got the volume controls here on the left. Sort of stuff you'd normally expect to see on a phone. It's a full Android experience inside. You get GPS in there, you get Bluetooth in there, you got your Wi-Fi, and here we go, I can actually turn it on. Um, you can take pictures, and what I've used it for uh, more than anything is to uh, sort of um, store and track uh, my, uh, my cycle journeys. So it goes on the handlebars of my bike, and it will um, save to Strava my my cycle rides, my bike rides basically. And I think by the looks of it, Unihertz have realized that a lot of the users of this tiny phone are using it really to do that sort of thing. Now, the newer model here on the left has got a uh, more internal storage. So I should mention here on this, it depended what model you had, but on the Jelly Pro here, you get say uh, two gig of RAM in the Pro version and you get uh, 16 gig of actual storage on the Pro version. The back of it pops off, which I'll show you uh, possibly when it boots up. The back pops off and you can get into the battery. It's got a dual uh, nano SIM in there, so you can put two SIM cards in there. Um, so yeah, you can see it's charging and I can, that's what I've got on there. You see what I've got my Strava on there. I'll bring it a bit closer to the camera so you can actually maybe see something. I'll just focus in for you. So you can see here, I can record, I can go into Play Store, I can browse as normal. So you've got 3G signal there. So if I go into Chrome, and you can see my weekly progress, I haven't actually done much cycling this week. The only bad thing about this phone is the fact that when you do get to do any sort of data entry, it's a little bit fiddly. You can do it, you can actually type in on here, on the tiny keyboard, but the interface perhaps needs to be blown up a little bit so you can actually work with it. But it is surprising actually how um, you type on the keyboard at the bottom and how much you do get it correct. Uh, so you can see I haven't had this um, charged up and it's slightly out on the time. So that should now work hopefully. But um, let's see if we can refresh this. Come on, it's quarter past two. And now it works. Okay, so there we go. It uh, browses sites as you'd normally expect it to. You can see here the news and there's Strava firing up in the background because that's on um, in the background. Um, we could get onto Google Maps. We've got all the usual things you would expect to find. Now, that is great. And it's relatively cheap price as well. I believe this went for 99 pounds. You've got Wi-Fi on there. You've got the dual band Wi-Fi. You've got GPS, as I mentioned before. You've got the G sensors. So you've got the micro SD card slot. It charges, as you can see here, by the micro USB. However, since then, uh, Unihertz have come out with this, and this is now available on their website for uh, $249 US. You can have a look at your local cost on that. Now, the difference here is this is waterproof. It's got a faster processor. Um, you've got better cameras, more storage, more memory, and you've got NFC as well, so you can actually do Android Pay. It's a tiny little thing, and it's got a bigger battery, a 2,000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery, and I totally haven't got this little sellotape off yet, and I don't have anything to uh, cut it with. So I'm just going to pause the video while I just do that, but you can see on the back here, we've got an octa-core 2 gigahertz C, uh, CPU. On the original Unihertz Jelly Pro, I think it was only one gigahertz uh, chip it wasn't the fastest as you've seen from my experience there just browsing around it was a quad core 1.1 gigahertz chip on this particular 
Unihertz Jelly Pro. So they've upgraded that on the Atom here on the uh, on the left, and we've got a octa-core two gigahertz chip. So it's a 4G smartphone. This one's got 2,000 milliamp hour battery. On the previous one, we had a 950 milliamp hour battery, which I mentioned. So bigger battery, better camera, 16 megapixel on the back instead of the 8 megapixel on this one. You've now got a 8 megapixel fixed focus selfie camera instead of the 2 megapixel fixed focus on that one. You've got Android 8.1 on here and you've got water and dust resistance as well as Bluetooth, GPS, 4G, Wi-Fi and NFC for the Android payment. So I'm just going to cut the, you can tell I've literally just received this. Uh, the sellotape is still intact here. I need to actually, my nails aren't that sharp. So I'm just going to have to uh, uh, slice it with a knife. Just two seconds. Right. So I'm back now. I'll slice this. If we give it the usual shake where it doesn't actually come out. Come on, come on. Look, look, look I'm so prepared. This is totally... I mean, who, who, who designs these boxes at times? It's like, I want to get it out at you. Okay, so instantly you're met with a little pin that enables you to probably open the SIM card slot. So it looks like, by the way, I should mention here on this one, and it's going to moan at me, there's a look, whole back comes off like smartphones used to do in the old days. And the back does tend to flex quite a bit when you do it. Um, I'm going to fight with it as much as I've fought with the box, but uh, I'll just um, get the back off for you. Okay, so this is the back of the original Unihertz Jelly Pro. And you can take the uh, battery off there. And you can see here my SIM card is in the middle here. We've got another SIM card and we've got a micro SD uh, slot for um, more storage. So you can see here on this one, you can just pop the back off and there you go. But obviously on the new Atom, uh, it's slightly different because we've got this uh, magical pin thing that everybody loses um, in order to actually get to the tray. So I presume there's a tray in this. So... Um, in here, we will find no doubt some instructions, which I'll put yeah, as a user guide there. Thank you for choosing Unihertz. Uh -huh. I'm going to ignore that because that's what I do. And here is the actual phone itself. You can tell immediately it's rugged, more rugged. We've got a screen protector here. Now this is more ideal for fitting to my bike because it is more rugged for a start off. So if I open it up, wow, well, yeah, that does feel a lot more rugged straight away. You can see here on the side, volume up and down, and obviously this is a SIM tray. Let's get that out and see how that is uh, constructed. So if we pop this open here, that's nicely done. There's the two uh, slots for the SIM card, so you can have two SIM cards, you can have a work one and a personal one, or one for your wife and one for your mistress. Uh, got your volume up and down. You can see here, comparing the two, it's uh, definitely a bit more blocky. Now, um, the old one, I'll say the old one, it's still for sale. Uh, I believe it's still for sale. The uh, Jelly Pro here on the top is 92 millimeters by 43 by 13. And I'm just checking this. Whereas the more rugged version, the Atom, is 96.6 millimeters, so slightly longer, by 18.8 millimeters thick, so definitely thicker, and 45 millimeters um, across the top. You can see here they've moved the uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter audio port more central, put that right in the middle, so you give us these bumpers here either side to protect it from knocks and drops. On this side, Wow, everything's completely changed. This isn't just the same phone in uh, a new chassis. This is totally different. So you've got a USB-C charging port there instead of the original micro uh, USB. You've got a push to talk button here. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with that here in the UK, but we'll try it. And then this will be the power button, which I'm going to press. And here you can see on the front, there is now a tactile. Oh well, no, it's not tactile. We've got a a sort of button, I think this must be a fingerprint reader, which I'll uh, no doubt, well, actually I should have read the instructions, perhaps there is something to be said about reading instructions. So we've got a lanyard loop on the bottom here, and again I apologise for the focusing, let's see if we can get this focused in. A lanyard loop on the bottom, 
We've got the external speaker on the back here. I'll just flip it around the right way. You can see the camera arrangement is uh, a little bit better this time too. And the way it's been designed. This is all screwed down, so it looks a lot more industrial. So yeah, the uh, this is not just the same phone in a different chassis. They've really worked on this one. So here we go, hi there. It's now booted up and started. So the screen is still the same. This is still the same screen as it was before. Still 240 by 432, uh, two and a half, 2.45 inch um, screen. So nothing changed there, but the camera is obviously better. So we've got, here we go, look at this flashing vision settings. So let's have a look at that. Look, see, that's great. They've realized that, hey, you might want to customize this device because unless you've got fingers the size of uh, sort of, a, I don't know, an, an ant, you're going to have problems. So you can zoom in on stuff. You can turn that on or off. These are the accessibility settings. The font size, you can make that larger, which is great. I'll just increase that. A select to speak. So that's great. You've got talk back on here. So I'm going to press start. Connect to mobile network. So I'm going to skip that because as you've seen, there is no SIM card in there. Now, I've noticed there's no micro SD tray. Did you notice that too? So let's just have a look. Have we got a micro SD card slot at all? No. So they have removed the micro SD card slot. Um, so that is in there, obviously, as you saw on the back, but on this one, it's not to be found. So you've got 64 gigabytes of storage, and that's it. To be honest, I know. I don't know about you guys, but how many of you, and you can see here, that's the size of my um, on-screen keypad. And uh, you feel like using this thing here just to type on it. But uh, you don't have to use your finger. I don't know about you anyway, but um, how many of you guys are going to be using this as your main phone? I mean, it is, for me, it's a secondary phone, a bit like the Palm, which has just been released. I'm just going to try and enter my, but as I say, this, this screen keypad is really tiny, and you would think it is impossible to use, but it is actually works very well indeed. So let's just start focusing on that. It's connecting to my Wi-Fi, it's checking for updates. Let's just see if it's going to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna set up as new, we're gonna ignore that. Checking info. I'd be interested to see what this is at the bottom. Let me just do a search to see if it's, a, I've literally, literally just unboxed. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a fingerprint sensor at the bottom, which again is something else that the original um, the Unihertz Jelly Pro did not have. So I'm gonna skip this as well. Uh, which is going to really get annoyed with me about and I'm just going to skip it for now uh, You put your name in so I'm going to put uh, cool. Let's just see cool Smart oh, come on sm so you can't go quick mm -mm. You do have to think about it quite a bit you can You, you can't be quite as liberal or as uh, ham-fisted as you can on a bigger phone now I can register my fingerprint so let's do that uh, fingerprint and pin yes I'm gonna register a, um, let's just do that delete next next put a pin number in okay now let's um, touch the sensor so let's just see how good this is and again and again and again it seems to be quite quick I must admit so that's not doing too bad at all. I'm just going to use my thumb for now. You can register additional fingers, of course, on the left and the right hand. But I'm just going to put one in for now. You can see here I am sometimes having trouble pushing buttons. Again, the, the tiny nature of the screen um, means that perhaps it won't be your full-time phone. Um, but uh, it is good for various other things. You can see here that we've got a... Very simple Google interface here. That's the main screen. Let's try browsing again and we'll see if it's any quicker than it was before. You can hear there's a lot of clicks. So you can see I made a mistake there. Let's just do that again. Come on, come on. I've made lots of mistakes now. Let's concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. S, M, boom. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, that's a Google response. And the site definitely loads quicker than it did before. There's a cookie warning message. So let's compare it with this. Actually, no, we can't because the battery's gone flat already. But you can see it's uh, a bit quicker than it was before. So I'll just give you uh, another little bit of a tip there. You can see we've got two dots here and here, and they help navigate around the phone. So if I click on there, this goes back. And this one over here is the sort of uh, to scroll through your current apps. So that's good. So that goes home. So that's your home button. That's your back. And that's your sort of current list of apps that you've got. Let's see what's on the phone. So we've got the usual stuff, um, calculator, camera. Let's press this push to talk button. Okay, and it logs into Zello. Um, so I'll have to do some more research into that. Let's press back. We've got an FM radio. Obviously, you're going to need a set of headphones in there. We've got Google Maps, Messages, Photos, Pedometer has been installed, SOS, a sound recorder. Zello is already installed and track back. So this really is a quick unboxing and an overview of the brand new uh, Unihertz Atom. Go to the Unihertz website, unihertz.com, uh, and you can see uh, how to get yourself one of these. Um, it's been funded through Kickstarter, same as the original Unihertz Jelly Pro. And uh, yeah. It's a more rugged design. Let's just have a look. So obviously we've got the screen protector, which you can put on here. Um, put that over the top. And then what else have we got in the box? We have got a charger. And we have a cable, which is great. So here's the... Uh, can you believe I've got a charger in there? This is obviously not the UK charger because uh, there aren't any UK plugs that are that thin. This is probably the European one, yeah. So this is the mainland Europe uh, charger. It goes in there, so you can plug it in to any real um, USB charger. Put that in there nice and neatly. Um, what I would like to see maybe is a holder to fit it onto my bike uh, a bit easier. Um, but um, I'm sure I can get one of those. So there's a lanyard. That's kind of stretchy. You put that on there. And you can maybe put it on your neck or on your wrist as you're running. You can obviously... Again, you don't have to use this for Strava. You can use this for your uh, music. You could put Spotify on there and you could listen to music and use your standard data plan. Uh, here's the USB-C um, charging cable, standard sort of stuff. So that is uh, an overview of this new 4G capable rugged smartphone. It's the smallest 4G rugged smartphone out there. It's available from unihertz.com.